I want to talk to you today about your authority as a believer. And uh, the scripture, uh, I want to start with Matthew 4. Now, if you, if you read it all, uh, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, but I want to just focus in on the first verse. Then was Jesus led up by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Uh, this passage, the, the fourth chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 11, deals with the, with the encounter that Jesus had with the devil. And each time the devil showed him, actually perverted the scripture, and told him what he could have if he would just bow down and worship him, each time Jesus used the word, it is written. Jesus said only, he only does what his father tells him to do. Now we understand that Jesus was the word of God clothed in flesh. And the scripture says that God watches over his word to perform it. Now that means he doesn't watch over our words. No, he watches over his word that comes out of our mouth. That's why it's so important that we get our words in harmony with his words. Notice in the scripture that when the devil came to Jesus, Jesus replied, it is written. He quoted the word of God. He quoted scripture. He knew that heaven and earth would pass away, but God's word would not pass away. And today I want to show you how to base your words. I'm talking about the words that come out of your mouth on what the scripture says and how to stand on them. And if you want the word of God to work in your life, then you're going to have to play by God's rule book and not your own. Now, as an example, uh, when I was uh, about five years old, my dad, Earl Roberts, put a golf club in my hand. My dad was an avid golfer, and it was a good player, too. And he forced me to hold the club properly. He forced me to stand properly. He forced me to swing properly. He would not allow me to do it my own way. He forced me to follow the rules so that I could hit the ball correctly. <laughs> and you know, um, when I was 14, I beat him for the first time. And uh, he was, he was uh, happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, Dad, you'll never beat me again. And he didn't. I defeated him every time we played after that. That's because he forced me to learn how to stand right, how to, how to swing right, how to hold the club right. He taught me the rules. And inside the clubhouse, uh, in the men's locker room, there was a sign, big sign on the wall. And it said, the game of golf ceases to be golf when the rules are broken at leisure. Well, even Jesus had to follow the rules. That's why when the devil came to him and tempted him, Jesus quoted the word of God. Now, if Jesus had to do it, how much more do you and I need to follow the rules? How much more do we need uh, to take our seat of authority and use the word of God in our everyday lives? More than anything else, I want to help you take your seat of authority and help you make your home and your surroundings a healing house. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks. How to make your house a healing house. To make it a place of deliverance. To make it a place of miracles. Uh, to make it a place of healing. I want to help you stand on the word of God for yourself. And for your family. And for your dear ones. I want to help you unleash the power that's within you. Your authority as a believer. You say, who, me, Richard? I've got authority. Yes, you do. Because on the last night of Jesus' earthly life, he gave his name to his disciples. He said to them in John 16, before now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive so that your joy may be full. He gave them the right to use his name. He gave them that authority. So first of all, as a child of God, your authority is not earned, but given to you by Jesus for you to overcome spiritual battles. Now, let me give you five things that I believe will be a blessing in your life. First of all, look at Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, he wasn't talking about spiders and snakes. He was talking about enemies. That was a phrase used in those days to refer to enemies of the things of God. And you have the right 
and the authority of God to stand up to those enemies and to believe that God is going to use you because you know His Word and because you speak His Word. Secondly, there is great power in your spoken words. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Listen, friend, the creative power of your words, the creative power of how you speak God's promises aligns you with His will. And it puts you in what I like to call a preferred position with God. Oh, it's so important. And third, there is power in your God-given faith and in your spoken words. Now remember, God says in the, in the Word of God that He's given you faith. The Bible says every person has the measure of faith. So don't say, I don't have any faith. That's not true. You were born with it. You couldn't get saved without faith. You wouldn't uh, get in your car and drive unless you had faith that you'd arrive at your destination. Everybody has faith. The question is not, do you have faith? The question is, are you going to use it? <laughs> now, the scripture in, uh, in Mark chapter 4, verses 23 and 24 says this, For verily I say unto you, or unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. And then it goes on in the next verse to say, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now, Richard, what are you talking about? I'm talking about obstacles being moved out of your way. Well, it sounds impossible in the natural, doesn't it? But with God, nothing, there is nothing in this world that's impossible to him, to her, who believes. And fourth is operating in God's authority. Ephesians 1 verses 19 and 20 says this, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Listen friend, you can literally tap in to the same power that raised Christ from the dead. You have that power. You have that unlimited power of God down inside you if you just take that power, that authority, and begin to use it. And then here's number five. If you missed one, two, three, and four, don't miss number five. Here's the scripture. It's 2 Timothy 1.7. It speaks of overcoming fear and doubt. For God hath not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Listen, friend, fear does not come from God. Fear comes from the devil. Fear comes to torment you, to destroy, to wreck your life. And you can speak to that fear. You can speak to that doubt. And you can commend it to, to leave in the authority of Jesus' name. You have been given that ability. You have been given that authority. So it's time for you to stand up and hold your head high and your shoulders high and say, no devil, you can't have me. No devil, you can't have my property. No devil, you can't have my home. No devil, you can't have my health. No devil, you can't have my finances. No devil, you can't have my marriage, my business, my job, my ministry. You can't have my emotions. You can't have me because I belong to God. You can speak to the devil like that. That's what Jesus did. Every time the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus Jesus said, devil, it is written. And after a while, the devil left him. And when you speak to the devil like that, he leaves. He packs his bag and moves away. Because you have that right. You have the authority in Jesus' mighty name. You have that power. You have that authority. And I'm setting my faith with you right now in Jesus' name. And I'm sending the word of God to you. The word of God to you for you to take the faith that's in your heart. Don't let it lie dormant in your heart. If you believe the word of God, if you believe what I'm saying today, then take that faith, take that authority and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm releasing my faith. Satan, it is written and begin to quote those scriptures and say, devil, you can't have me because I belong to God. Say it in faith. Say it with all your heart. Say it with all your trust you have in him. Believe it. Expect it. And watch for God to make it come to pass. And I believe he'll do it. And he'll do it for you. Because he is no respecter of persons. 
I pray that in faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.